Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to Memphis, Tennessee, home of the world's greatest barbecue, the Blues, and the Memphis Fire Department. We're in Frazier at Station 26. My name is Kevin, and I know that a lot of you are stuck at home, unable to go on field trips, so we thought maybe we'd bring the field trip to you. So we're gonna show you around the station, show you our equipment, and how we live day to day. Come on in. We're gonna head into the day room. This is where we spend a lot of our time. As you can see, there's a bunch of chairs in here, computers for us to study on, for us to keep up on any changes to our protocols, whether they're medical or fireside. Here's Moss, hanging out at the watch desk, taking care hey of business, guys, how you doing? answering phones, making sure that if someone comes to the door, that they're taken care of. On the wall here, we have something interesting. This is our wall map. Now we have all sorts of technology in our equipment to tell us where to go and how to get there, but sometimes the easiest and most reliable thing is just good old paper. Over here, we had a question from Robbie. He uh, asked the DC, do we have a big screen TV? Robbie, yes, we do. It's a gigantic TV, and even me, with my long arms, I can't hug it no matter how much I would try. I'd like to hug it because we love this TV. So these TVs, we purchase them on our own. A lot of people ask that. Does the city give us TVs? No, they don't. We pay for the cable, we pay for the internet and the TV because this is our home. One third of the year, we live here. Uh, another question was asked, do we have a dog? And the answer is yes, actually we do. Unfortunately, today Rizzo is not here. Rizzo works with one of our other firefighters named Stephanie. Stephanie's her handler, and Rizzo is specially trained to be a therapy dog for us. A lot of what we do can be a little scary, a little tough to, to deal with sometimes. So Rizzo is here to make sure that we feel okay. She's specially trained to help us if we're having a hard time, and we love having her here. Today Rizzo is somewhere else though, working with another crew, along with Stephanie, making sure that the whole department is treated well. Next, we're gonna head on into the kitchen and we'll show you where we make all of our meals. So here we are in the kitchen. These guys playing a competitive game as usual. There's always something going on competitive in the station since we live with each other. And here we are, Moss is with the most important piece of equipment in the entire station, the coffee machine. If that breaks down, we're all in trouble. Thanks, Moss. So over here you'll see we have a bunch of refrigerators. And that's because we have three shifts that work here. Each day, there are 10 people that come in on each shift. So we work for 24 hours, then tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., 10 more people come in. And so with that many people working through here, we have to have enough space to store all of our food. Over here, we have Moss getting ready for dinner tonight. Looks like we got burgers on deck. Making burgers. It's gonna be amazing. Perfect. Moss is one of the best cooks on the job, I can guarantee you that. So we got a question all the way from Australia about what do firefighters eat for lunch? And the answer to that is anything Moss makes, I'll eat. Now, for our shift, each shift is different, each crew is different, but we eat together lunch or breakfast and dinner. Lunch, we kind of make our own stuff because it tends to be when we're a little busier. But this morning, Moss made us some pancakes, scrambled eggs, and bacon, so we were a little spoiled on that. Next, we're gonna take you on back and show you our locker room and bed hall where we sleep. So here's a little hallway where we have a lot of important stuff as well. This is our turnout room. Now, when we fight fires, a lot of times our gear gets really, really wet from sweat, from all the water, from the hoses, and we have to clean them off afterwards. So we wanna make sure that they're dry. So this room has a really strong heater in it and we can leave our gear hanging and it can dry out before our next shift. This room is where we have all of our emergency medical supplies. So we have the ambulance, we have our engine, and we have our truck. All of them have all of us who are medically trained. So the majority of what we do is medical calls. And this room is where we restock all that equipment so we don't have to take it from somewhere else. We can come back, get more gloves, more IV bags, band-aids, braces, whatever we need, it's all in that room. So come on back and I'll show you in here. So this is our locker room. This is where we keep all of our personal stuff. Each one of us is assigned a locker and mine's all the way down at the end down there. Oh, hey Moss. Hey, how you guys doing? 
We want to have our toiletries, changes the clothes, we store our bedding in there, anything personal we might need for the 24 hours while we're here. This is also where we can get ready, brush our teeth, shave, use the restroom, showers are back there. And then right through that door behind me is our bed hall. Now this is our bed hall. Uh, a couple people asked some questions about do we get to sleep, where do we sleep, how long do we get to sleep. Now, yes, we do get to sleep sometimes. Where do we sleep is in here. It's kind of like a big slumber party for everyone. We all have a little cube that we get to sleep in if we're not running a call. A lot of nights though, you don't get a whole lot of sleep, but that's all right. We get to go home the next day and be with our families. So this next bed right here is where I sleep. So as you can see, nothing super fancy, but it does the job. You get a little bit of time in here to rest up before the next call. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Moss. You doing all right? Yeah. How are you? So, what you might not notice is there's a little trick that's uh, incorporated with these rooms. We always want to be able to reply as fast as possible and respond to whatever call there is. So you can see, even though I have long legs, even from my bed, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and I'm out on the apparatus floor. So seven steps, and I'm out here ready to respond. So next what we're gonna do is we'll show you our equipment, we'll show you our apparatus, and give you a little more fun glimpse of what we do. So we also got a question about where we store our gear. When we're not on duty, we each have our own locker that we can store everything in. It's open air because again, sometimes it gets wet, it gets a little stinky, and it just needs to dry and air out. So we lock it up in here, and it's ready for us when we come in the next day. Another thing that we do is, or another question that came to me was, do we have any special apparatus or equipment here? We do have the ambulance, we have the truck, and we have the engine. The special piece of equipment we have here is this. It's not fire engine red, it's lawnmower orange. So that's our special piece of equipment. And we like to stay in shape because our job is physically demanding. Here we have Chris and Moss and Ron all working out. What are you guys doing today? 100 bench press, 2,000 push-ups. So it's a light day for you fellas, huh? Just a light day. Just a light day. All right. Well, we got to stay in shape to make sure that we're ready to react and go to work anytime. Next, we'll take you out. We'll show you some of our equipment and show you our gear. The first piece of equipment that I wanted to show you was our SCBA. It stands for Self-Contained Breathing Apparatus. You might also hear it called an air pack. I'm going to turn it on for you. This is what we wear when we go into fires. It allows us to breathe 45 minutes of fresh air. A lot of people have asked, is that oxygen? And no, it's just normal air. The normal air we breathe is about 21% oxygen, so we don't want pure oxygen, number one, because it's dangerous in a fire, and this is a lot easier to compress. So, what I want to do is show you some of the cool things that this can do. Normally what I'll do, and we'll show you a little later, is we have our mask on and all of our other protective equipment. But these are brand new and they show some really cool things. As you can see on here, it'll show you how much air we have left. That's the amount of pressure that we have in there. So I have a manual gauge as well as the digital gauge. So the next thing I'm going to do is show you something really cool that's built into these. This can turn into a thermal imaging camera. So we'll use the thermal imager. It'll help us see through the dark, through the smoke, and through the fire to help find people, find fire, and whatever else we might be looking for. So let's go in and see if it works. Whoop, looks like we found someone down there. Hey fellas, how's it going? Hey. Hey. What's going on? Y'all doing all right? <laughs> doing great. It's Moss again. So now let's head back out and we'll show you some more of our equipment. Next we're going to show you all of our turnout gear. This is the gear that we wear in the fires. Chris is going to help me out as we go through it. So first thing I want to show you is our boots and our pants. Now everything we do we want to do as fast as possible so we can get to the emergency and to do so Part of what we have is some special boots. These look like regular boots, right? But we have a quick way to get out of them and not fumble with the laces. Secret zipper on the side, down, and they're done. Next one, same thing. It's a lot faster than having to untie everything. 
It might look like our boots and pants are connected. They're not. So we just push them down like this so it's really easy to put them on quickly. So Chris is gonna put his jacket on, but what I wanted to show you first is we got a question about is our gear heavy and is it hot? And yes, it is both, but not nearly as hot as the fire. So to keep us safe, there's multiple layers of these coats. This outer layer helps protect us from some of the moisture from the water, uh, protects us from some of the heat, but not much. This inner layer is a thermal layer that'll help create a barrier between us, all the heat, smoke, and fire. We have a lot of different little pockets in here where we can keep things that we might need when we're on the fire. A radio pocket, this pocket I carry some webbing to help with all sorts of things. Uh, it also has our gloves connected to it. So you see Chris has his coat on, his pants on, he's putting on his SCBA. I wanted to make sure that we got a shot of the ambulance before they left. We won't be able to show you the inside because they've got to go on a call. some firefighters have a mustache, but you won't see firefighters with a beard. That's because if you have a beard, you won't get a good seal around there. A mustache won't go to the edges, and it's facial hair that you can have and still get a good seal. Chris put his hood up, which will help protect the back of his head, his neck, and his ears. Anywhere that's not protected by the mask. And he gets his helmet on now. And his last step would be to turn on his SCBA to make sure that there's air in there. He's able to click in, and now he's breathing air from the back of the air pack. Now, there's also another thing, it'd be hard to hear Chris if he had all this equipment on we were trying to talk. So what they did is they built in a little speaker for us that now if Chris says hello to everyone, hey, everybody. you can hear him. You can hear his voice and we can communicate clearly through there and not just get a muffled of garbled mess. So, Next, what we'll do is we'll head on out and show you some of the big equipment, the big toys, and what they do, and all the parts of them. <laughs> so, this is what we call an engine or the pumper. There's a difference between these. A lot of people will call this a fire truck, but what the truck is, is the next piece that we'll show you. The engine is what carries the water and carries all of the hose. As you can see, there's some hose stuffed in here. This is what we use to fight house fires most of the time. These are two pre-connect hose lines of 200 feet. Inside of here, there's 750 gallons of water. That's not all the water we're gonna to need to use, but that's enough to buy us some time until we're hooked up to a fire hydrant. As you see, we have some ladders on here, but we have much bigger ones on the trunk. Around the back, you can see where a lot more of the hose is stored. This is our big five inch hose. This is what we use to connect to a fire hydrant that'll keep feeding into the pump and letting us use more water uh, beyond that 750 gallons. We have different sizes of hose that can be used for all sorts of different things. If you come around, we also have all sorts of medical equipment in here. We have uh, tools to get into buildings, axes, all of that inside. This is our pump panel. Now, we got asked what things you're learning in school now that could help you on this job. And there's a lot of things. One of them is communication. Learn to speak properly. Learn to communicate with your friends and coworkers. This is math. There is a ton of math involved in being able to run a fire engine and pump water. We want to make sure we have the right amount of pressure, the right amount of gallons per minute, the right flow coming in and going out. And being able to read all of these is really important. You'll also need to learn how to write. After everything we do, we have to write a report. Whether you're a big boss or the lowest man on the totem pole, you're always recording things. Next, we'll take you over and we'll show you the truck and all its tools and what it can do. Go. Okay, now this is the truck. 
it's different than the pump because what the truck is is essentially it's a giant rolling toolbox. It's filled with all sorts of things to do a bunch of different jobs. This doesn't even have water or hose on it, but it has other tools that we use for firefighting. If we walk down, we can show you some of them. In this compartment, you see we've got some saws. We use these saws for all sorts of different things, but we use them mostly for cutting holes in roofs that help let some of the smoke, heat, and gases out so the firefighters inside, off the pump, it's a little cooler, a little easier for them to see, a little easier for them to operate. These can also be used to cut through locks, to cut through doors that we might have a hard time getting through in an emergency. This compartment's loaded with all sorts of hand tools, shovels and axes and halligans, everything we might need in a bunch of different situations. Down here, we have a fan. This is a really big ram fan. What we use this for is to get smoke out of a building. When a fire is done, we're not done with our work. And what we want to do is use this to push as much smoke as possible out so that we can continue to go and make sure that the fire hasn't gone anywhere else. We'll come around to the other side here and we'll show you some of our tools that uh, many people talk about. This one is ladders. Obviously the truck is loaded with ladders. We have a bunch of different sizes, uh, different types, things that can be used on all different parts of buildings and everywhere else. Around the front here, we have what might be known to some of you as the jaws of life. We use these for auto extrication mostly. Uh, what they do is they have spreaders, cutters, rams, things that will really help us get into a car, get people out, uh, make sure that we can access things. Sometimes cars get crumpled up and it's hard to open up the doors. So what these will do is they'll help us open them, help us get uh, people out safely. <clears throat> This is one example of it. Now this one's a little different. This one's actually battery powered. So you see the power it has spreading. It can pinch, it can cut, and believe it or not, this thing, even though it doesn't look like much, will cut a car apart. We have bigger versions on here that have big power units, more hydraulic base, bigger equipment. So if we need a little more oomph, we've got that on the truck. The next thing we'll do here is we'll raise our ladder and we'll show you just what it looks like when it's fully extended. We had a question about how big the ladder is. This ladder is 100 feet long. We also got asked how much the truck weighs. The truck weighs roughly 58,000 pounds, which is a lot of weight. So what we'll do next is we'll have Randon and Ron set up the ladder and show you just how high it can go. So Randon and Ron, what they're doing is they're grabbing ladder belts right now. What those are for is to help keep them safe when they're operating up on the ladder. You can already see what we have on the truck are outriggers. Those help spread out and they help stabilize the truck because when you start raising the ladder, it's going to become really uneven.
though, pretty difficult to have a fear of heights as a firefighter, but it's definitely something we need to get over. We train a lot, make sure that we're always working on our weaknesses. If you're afraid of heights, the more you try it, the better you'll get. As you can see, that ladder is pretty high. All right, well, thank you so much for coming by today. I know that it's a little weird right now and kind of hard. And I'm sorry you guys aren't able to be at school with your friends, going on fun things like field trips. We thought maybe showing you around what we do here would give you a little break, even have you a little bit of fun. I also wanted to let you know that uh, we got a lot of questions from all over the world. Germany, Australia, all over the United States, England, uh, Holland, all over, Ecuador as well. Uh, I know that today you only saw men in this station. Normally though, we have two women who work here as well. This isn't just a job for boys, not at all. Thank you guys for coming by. Hopefully we'll see you again soon. Next time you're in Memphis, stop by and say hello.